Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Power Platform Advent Calendar. Um, today we have another, or I have another teeny tiny tip, and it's once again PowerShell, one of my favorite tools. And um, I like to give you a few of those uh, small tasks with PowerShell because that's how I learned to get into PowerShell, into basically a CLI. Uh, and last time I talked about PowerShell, I said that it's it's a very mighty tool where you can do a lot of things and you can screw up a lot of things. So it's it's nice if you have like small and minor tasks to uh, ease into the whole handling of it. And what we are going to going to do today is we are going to disable the feedback service from Microsoft in the Power Platform. And uh, every once in a while you get feedback from Microsoft that says, do you like Power Platform? Would you recommend Power Platform to your coworkers? Stuff like this. And um, don't get me wrong, I do like good feedback. But quite often I think that the citizen developer in my company or at my customers companies um, are not the people who have who have the experience to give constructive and good feedback for Power Platform. Because usually this feedback comes at a moment where it's mostly annoying. And then you hit at least a one from 10, one to start, a one to 10 rating or something like this, but you get annoyed. And if you want to get feedback from citizen developer, maybe you want to uh, create your own feedback form that is aimed towards citizen developer. So that's what I usually do. And that's uh, why I want to show you how to um, disable the feedback service in Power Platform. So we are here now in PowerShell ISE. And that is not the same uh, tool as, uh, Power, uh, as PowerShell. That is a little bit different, but if you just look for PowerShell on your machine, you usually have PowerShell ISE. And um, the important part is here, <clears throat> if you open it, just remember to right click it and run as administrator so you have the um, correct rights. And we are going to use this one here and not the classic terminal or the classic PowerShell because we have a scripting panel up here that allows us to write multiple lines of code. So we can write a script and then run the script afterwards. There are a few other uh, things that are different here from the regular PowerShell. For example, we have a list with all the commandlets that we have. So it's it's actually a really nice tool that helps. Okay, last time um, we talked about the MS Online uh, module. This time we are going to need another mod module, a different one. And this one is uh, the almighty Power, Power Platform module. And let me show you, here is the um, documentation for the uh, PowerShell for Power Platform Administrators module. That's quite a mouthful. I put the link to the documentation in the video description, so you can just copy paste it. And here is a complete guide on how to install that. Basically, you get the requirements before um, beforehand, and you get the commandlet to um, install this. If you don't want just the commandlet and trust the Microsoft documentation, you can visit the PowerShell gallery. It's in here as well. Once again, you get more information here, and here is also the code snippet to install it. If you just click this button here on the right-hand side, you have just have it in your, you just copied it and you can paste it into a terminal, here into a shell, or, so this is um, the installation, and this one will provide a lot of features around our platform that are really helpful. You can do quite a lot. I'm not done because I haven't discovered everything yet. And so there's much to discover. And then there's another documentation site that I also put down in the video description to get started with PowerShell or Power Platform Administrators. Because last time I said when we need to do two things with every PowerShell module that we use. First, we need to install it, and then we need to import it into our PowerShell session. And what we do, um, how the command that looks in here is this app Power Apps account. And you can leave the app point prom in theory uh, project add power apps account is sufficient. Okay, what do we do now? Um, let me check my little cheat sheet. Um, I've installed the module already. And um, first, I would like to connect and import the module. And that is, as I just showed you, that is add power apps account. And what you can see here, here's an IntelliSense working. I can see all the commandlets that are available in this module and just click on it. No, I can tip, uh, I can click on tap to get this. And if I do this, I get the login credentials. I am asked to log in. And I do this with my admin account, because why not? Maybe we can cut this out. <laughs> so usually you get uh, asked to provide your login and your password as well. 
What we do now is we try to get the tenant settings to just see what tenant settings for the power platform we have. Once again, we use the IntelliSense feature um, to help us out here. And those are the tenant settings that this PowerShell module provides. And here are many interesting features in there, but we are talking about this one, disable survey feedback. And we can see this is set to false. This is the default. Um, this is why you get survey feedback every once in a while. So we want to um, set the disable survey feedback uh, setting to true. And for that, we need a little request body that we are going to write. So, and this why uh, this is why we use the ISE, where we can line, uh, write multiple line of code. Okay, so bear with me. I'm trying to live code that. Um, my test run before, I made a typo and nothing worked. Let's see how it works this time. So, we are going to create a variable. And this variable is called request body. Um, and in this request body, we have something. And of course, we want to disable the survey feedback and set this settings to the variable. Now we need to close the curly brackets. And after that, we need to activate or set this setting. So we are close with set, tenant settings. And what do we want to set? We want to set the request body and put in our variable that we just defined, the request body. Okay, this is a commandlet. And um, in this ISE, I have the possibility with this little green arrow here to just run this commandlet, run the script. There's another uh, part where I can select just a part of the script and run just a part. So this is really interesting if you get deeper into PowerShell or CLIs. But we can run the whole script. That looks good. And we already get the tenant settings back again. Disabled survey feedbacks are set to true. And that means from now on, we don't get any more survey feedbacks or no user in our tenant basically gets any survey feedbacks in Power Platform. That doesn't uh, works work for M three six five or Teams where you get survey feedbacks a lot, but this is way where you can switch it off for the Power Platform. And that's already it. So thanks for tuning in. And if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. And that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks, Michael, for the great tip.